Hello and welcome to Tales, Tales of, of the, the Uncharted, Uncharted Territories. Territories. Oh, as we're reeling from the events of Wolf in Steep Clothing, uh, the death of our beloved Talon and, well... His captain. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I mean, obviously respected, but I don't know that anyone would necessarily call Kreis beloved. No, no, mm, no. Hadn't quite I, earned that. No, definitely not, I would say. But yes, respected. He was respected towards the end. Yes. yes. Certainly, like, he had the... He was fortunate enough to have the opportunity to perform redemptive acts. And yes. seize those opportunities. And so, as we sat down to record a few of the stories that I had shortlisted, it occurred to me to go and see if I could find... In about five minutes, while you were making our, our you know, our portions of podcasting juice, <laughs> <laughs> whether I could find something. And I stumbled across this story by Astro Girl. I don't know for sure it's the same Astro Girl that we've encountered okay. before, because that was Astro Girl 2 on Live Journal, but I yeah, think it's... It uh, sounds sort of reasonable, reason. yeah. I mean, what are the odds of two Astro Girls both writing fanfics for uh, Farscape? Well... That would be the exact reason to call yourself Astro Girl 2 as a... Good point. <laughs> I mean... But, you know, the odds, of, the odds of there being a non-fanfic writing Astro Girl already on Live Journal is a lot higher. And oh, these stories proceed... Oh, yes, yes. And I, I don't remember you. when Live Journal started coming around, but that was... Oh, yonks and yonks well, ago. that. Pre-YouTube, yeah. so 2007, it was already well established. Right, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. All right. It's the it's the deep dark times, man. But <laughs> hey, hey, hey! This story, let me see, it's called "Die Trying," and it's uh, published the November eleventh, two thousand and six. And being more doesn't end with death, featuring Crace and ooh Zan, and spoilers through into the lion's den. But fortunately, we've already seen that, so that's yes. quite safe for Kay. Okay, so "Die Trying" by Astro Girl. He had expected oblivion after death. He had hoped for peace. This was neither. This was simply not living. Though he wondered if it still wasn't preferable to the alternative. When he became aware that he was not alone, he could not have said whether the Delvian had only just appeared or whether she'd been with him all along and had only just noticed. Either way, her presence took him by surprise. Bausan! For a microt, he wasn't sure he had recognised her correctly. She seemed different. Why are you here? She smiled at him. Her expression seemed gently amused, and he could d- 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 and he could detect no mockery behind it. Because I'm dead. <laughs> for for a beautiful second, I was so looking forward to hearing Zan's voice again, and I forgot that we made these choices. That she's a heckin' bogan from the Gold Coast. <laughs> yes, I see. Uh, allow me to rephrase that. Why are you here with me? He put up a hand. And do not say because I am also dead. I am well aware of the fact. She moved closer to him. Or perhaps she only seemed to. It was difficult to tell in this place. Perception was strange. And dimension, as he had been familiar with it, no longer quite existed. In a way, I believe that is the reason. She tilted her head a little, considering him. Are you willing to listen to a small lecture about the nature of life after death? I'm no, no idea where I'm going with this accent. Do you want to? Lo- hey, do you want to maybe pull the ripcord and try and do an actual kind zan? Because I think this is a heartfelt story, and maybe fair point. Do you want to try that? Yeah, let's do that. All right, all right. Because I'm doing, I'm doing my best. Uh, okay, uh, Chris. No, I got it. Right. Okay. Perceptional strange and dimension as yet been familiar with no longer quite existed. In a way, I believe that is the reason. Mm-hmm. She tilted her head a little, considering him. Are you willing to listen to a small lecture about the nature of life after death? Oh. Thank you. I'm actually really enjoying this. <laughs> Why not? I appear to have little else to do. True enough. Well then, she smiled again. We mortal beings, if we expect anything, expect that death will change us. That when we are translated to a higher plane, our spirits will be purged of their, all their darkness, great and small. And only the best and purest essence of our souls will continue. But of course... Nothing is ever that simple. Mm. Even in death, true change comes only from within and from the interaction of soul and soul. And so it's necessary to speak with those about whom our own souls are troubled. There was a flash of something sad and distant in her eyes, and Grace wondered briefly who and what she had already had to face here. He had never thought to ask about her crime. It seemed relevant now. With all respect, priestess, I fail to see why you should be the first on that doubtless very extensive list. (laughs) (laughs) Her shoulders raised in a tiny expressive shrug. The goddess's ways are sometimes mysterious, 
Perhaps you needed to speak with me first, or perhaps it is I who needed to speak with you. For a long moment she was silent. I always regret it, she, she said at last, that we never had a chance to talk. We were so seldom in the same place, and when we were, we always seemed to be in the middle of a crisis. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's right. Mm. Like, his sort of becoming a regular in Farscape was after her, her death and wait for yeah, the Yeah, there wheel. was only really uh, antagonistic confrontations between them. Yeah, just barely glimpses. I don't even know how often uh, she and Grace were, like, in the same room on the yeah. show. Hmm, good question. Well, I mean, of course, she was on the prison ship that was in uh, Grace's I mean, command. Show, right? Yeah, in, in, but that, yeah, Grace probably didn't make a habit of coming to a prison ship very often. So yeah, yeah, that's just one in his uh, in his carrier group. Okay, yes, he gave her a look of surprise. Talk about what? Oh, many things: hopes, fears. She waved an elegant blue hand. When you first left with Talon, I almost despaired for him. You know, oh. I feared what you would do to him with him. But then, when I discovered you hadn't fired first on the Halosians, when you expressed a desire to outfit Talon with non-lethal weapons, I thought, I hoped, that I had misjudged, that you were capable of change. Yes, yes, that's right. I th- I think in the ugly truth as well, mm. they're on Talon. So she has been in a room with you. Yes. Them. Yeah. But, yeah, that was the Halosian crisis, and she ended up at the... Halosians were those the uh, discaked? Yes, but Talon yes. was already gone by then, so you yes. saw recordings. But in, in The Ugly Truth, I mean, Talon was also gone, but at least in the flashbacks, <laughs> we got to see that they, they'd yes. been aboard. Yeah, okay. Oh, I, By the way, Astrogirl writes Zan and certainly Krace very well. Oh, yes. These are unmistakable voices. Krace's throat felt unaccountably tight. Talon was a good ship. I tried to be worthy of him. And the person you once were, he was not worthy? No. Zan nodded slowly, a soft, knowing look in her eyes. Don't look at me like that. How am I looking at you? With pity. He had not taken kindly to others' pity when he was alive, and he saw no reason to start accepting it in death. She shook her head. Not pity. Say, rather, empathy, perhaps? Empathy. The word emerged from him with a disbelieving snort. We have more in common than you might think. I, too, know what it's like to have a violent nature to struggle to change. She paused and looked at him silently, her eyes transfixing him. I know what it is like to hate. I hated you once. He could no longer look at those eyes and turned his face away. I probably deserved it. Whether or not you deserved it or not doesn't matter. Hate does terrible things to the soul that harbors it. I'm just thinking, this has never occurred to me before, how differently things could have turned out for Talon if Zan had survived and been aboard Talon during during these crises. Like, oh, yeah, she probably could have communed with him a lot better. Who better than, than her could have empathised with, you know, his, mm. his conflicts, counselled him, provided empathy. Yeah. The things that he... And it, ultimately, it might not have helped, considering just how much was done with him. Yeah. Oof. To begin with, and by Zalax as well, and the... Oof. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Farscape podcast is sneak ups on you, doesn't it? <laughs> Hate was so easy. He was always talking more to himself now than to her. And why not? Perhaps, after all, she was nothing more than a projection of his dying mind, no matter what he believed. So much easier than guilt. Easier than acceptance. I knew in my heart that Crichton wasn't to blame for my brother's death. But how could I accept that? Except that an inferior being in a technologically primitive craft just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. That it had nothing to do with my brother at all. No, it was my fault for sending him out there. Or it was Crichton's, and if it was Crichton's, then I could do something about it. I could have vengeance, at least. I couldn't... I couldn't do nothing. I did so much nothing for Talvo. He trailed off, lost in grief, as sharp and fresh as it had been the day of his brother's death. She remained respectfully silent until he looked back at her. I did try to change. Much good that it did me. You died well, she said quietly. I did. I think I might have been the only thing I ever did do well. When she said nothing, he found more words to fill the silence. So did you, I understand. She shook her head. I died for good ends, but for bad reasons. I welcomed death because I feared for my soul... Feared that if I continued to live, sooner or later I would lose my struggle. That I would once again be the vicious creature I was born to be. I believed an act of self-sacrifice would remove the stain from my soul, make me fit to meet my goddess. 
She paused. I understood so little. No one arrives here clean, and she rejects no one simply because they are soiled. It sounds a bit like the plot of Constantine. Whoa, yes it does! <laughs> hey, I wouldn't be so sure. He found himself surprised by the bitterness in his words. Grace surprised by bitterness? <laughs> I have yet to meet this goddess of yours. If she exists, she appears to have no interest in me. But you have met her. She is here now, around you, inside you. You simply can't hear her over the voice of your own pain. The goddess accepts all of us by our grace. But to truly be one with her, we must accept her as well. And since she is part of us, that means we must accept ourselves. She laid a hand gently on his arm. Do you understand? I'm sort of imagining her as a youth pastor. A little bit, Sort yeah. of turning a chair backwards. So, Which yeah. Which is kind of what she was pretty much all the time during the I show. I know, but she's, like, she doesn't hold a sermon while she's just lazily strumming the same four chords over and over <laughs> and trying to relate to the youth. Oh, yes. Anyway, this is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> decadent alien mysticism. A part of him whispered, and yet there he was. Dead, yet living, or at least thinking. So much of what he had been taught as a peacekeeper was wrong. Why not this, too? I think, he replied at last, yes, perhaps. She squeezed his arm, a strange motherly gesture. It's very difficult to become the souls we should be. Try as we might, it never is possible while we live. Always we are limited by our circumstances. And here, here there are no constraints, no physical demands, no expectations to live up or down to. And no excuses. Only your own heart and your willingness to forgive and be forgiven. She looked at him with a gentle, searching expression. Are you ready? He was quiet for a long moment. I promised someone once that I would try to find the better part of myself. I would hate to meet him here and be forced to admit that I had given up simply because I was dead. He looked into her eyes. Yes, I'm ready. That's Crichton. That's deathbed. Uh, uh, Talon Crichton. Yeah. She smiled at him, radiant as a star. Then come with me, she said. There are some people it's time for you to meet. Oh, that's the a... end. This is a cracking story, Kay. Yeah, it's amazing. This was fantastic. Thank you to Astro Girl for writing Die Trying. Thank you. Someone, uh, cl- she clearly had feelings for the, after the watching uh, Into the Lines then. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's fair to say. I think a lot of us had feelings after after watching Into the Lion's Den, but she translated this into this beautiful... Okay, I'm just thinking now, like, what I want now is exactly the same sort of scene, but with Talon. Oh. Still physically as large as he is. And just, <laughs> like, the big challenge is, like, she's got a megaphone or something, and she's trying to, like, make herself heard. Oh, come on, she'd just be walking around command. No, that's the thing. She's not She's not aboard him. He's hovering over her, and, oh. there's, and there's no ladder for her to reach. The, well, may, oh. the afterlife is very inconvenient. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't have a, a viewing deck on top. <laughs> this was Die Trying by Astro Girl. Thank you so much for joining us. And I mean, you know, no no story will, will ease the ache of our hero's loss, but I've, I've actually really appreciated this. Yes, this was a very good story. Thank you so well much. chosen. We'll see you again next week with the finale of season three, mm. episode 22. Do I remember that off the top of my head? Gosh, what? I mean, we have already recorded it because that's how timey-wimey we are. Yes. And it was called Dog with Two Bones, of course. Dog with Two that's Bones, what, yes. That's what it was called. Very. So we will be, we will have been, re- had recorded that next week when you hear it. There you go. <laughs> okay. I'm Kaki. I'm Kay. Bye-bye. Zwei, zwei. Nice. Effortless. Good. Look at us go. <laughs> I even pushed the right buttons. <laughs> <So> p- <laughs>